Welcome back to American Agenda. The University of Michigan Dearborn campus is coming under fire. Administrators have issued an apology for creating segregated online student cafes, one for whites and another for people of color. They say the cafes were intended to promote discussions about race and diversity. Joining us now to weigh in on the separate cafes is Eduardo Neret, and he's digital reporter for Campus Reform. Eduardo, thank you. I hope I got your name right. If not, please feel free to correct me because I want to get it right. Uh, and then you can tell us what happened here. No, you got it right. And I have to say, first off, I think it's incredibly sad and disappointing that nearly 60 years after the civil rights movement, a lot of our work is being undone. We are regressing as a society um, from all the hard work that those in the civil rights movement fought for. So that the, the University of Michigan, that they would create two events, one for white people and one for black people, isn't just uh, you know counterproductive and wrong and inappropriate. But it doesn't heal the divide. It doesn't heal the racial divide on campus. It does nothing to bring us together. And it, it, when you look at what's going around the country right now, there are millions of Americans who want to have these tough conversations on race. They want real social change. But you can't have that when college campuses, administrations, students, and other institutions in the country are dividing people on the very characteristics that they cannot control, things like their race. Well, you can make that argument from either side, of course. If people want to be in a group of just people of color, you you are ident being identified because of your race. So, d d but when you're in the majority, you have to think about things a little differently, I think the argument would go. Um, d but my understanding as I looked at this, there was an invitation to people to go to a cafe for non-POC people, uh, people identified as non-POC, in other words, non-people of color, correct? Is that how that happened? And was there good intention behind it to begin with? Well, a lot of these institutions, and I think the big irony is in this specific case is they say this is in the name of social justice and inclusion. So this was put together by the school's social justice office. And we've, we've heard those terms thrown a lot around in the last few weeks across the country. But again, you have to ask yourself, no matter what the intention is, what is it really doing? And again, it is dividing people. It is separating people based on skin color. And you can't have the real change, the real conversations that people are asking for when you can't even have people of different races have these conversations. And so this isn't the first Time we've seen this, unfortunately. At the Leadership Institute's campus reform, we've covered a number of colleges and universities over the years who have done similar events like this in the name, again, of social justice and inclusion. So, for example, St. Olaf College recently postponed their commencement ceremony for the coronavirus, but then they put on a special online commencement ceremony for students of color only and minority students. Uh, right now, we're seeing across the country students at Rice University, students at NYU, they're demanding black only spaces on campus, things like dorms, things like social spaces. And and again, college is about students from many different backgrounds mm -hmm. coming together to learn and to exchange ideas. And it really begs the question, can that be done? And the answer is no. When this is happening, when institutions are dividing people based on these characteristics. So did the university apologize and what did they apologize for? They apologize for putting on the, the, the event together. And I think they, they should, because if you look at what events like these are going to do, my concern is what are these students going to do when they go out into the real world, uh, you know, in the future? These students seem to think and seem to have been taught that the way to get real equality and the way to get real change is by congregating in their individualized groups uh, for characteristics that they can't control. Mm -hmm. But what is this us versus them mentality uh, going to affect them in their personal lives when they graduate? How now, is it you, going to you would agree that that perspective comes from uh, people of all kinds. Color, right, I, uh, 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 and, and people of all backgrounds. You know what? This us versus them, of course. I think the us versus them mentality is is difficult. It's bad for all backgrounds. And so we yeah. don't want any background of people uh, thinking that they have to resort to other people who share their characteristics. Right. The beauty of America is there are people of a lot of backgrounds. And, and that's exactly the point. If we, yeah. if we create a standard, if we create a system on campuses and into society that, you know, we should have separating people based on their skin color, that's not going to bode well for anyone. That's not going to bode well for people's personal lives. It's not going to bode well for, for, for our country. And you can't have that. Very good. Thank you, Eduardo. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much for having me.